Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals. And a few months ago, I was down in California with Dan Hurd and Brent at Cerro Gordo. We were looking for gold at Brent's silver mine. Brent and I went down underground, we gathered up some ore, and I've mailed it back to myself. And my plan is to crush this down through my crushing and concentrating system and see if I can recover any gold out of Brent's silver mine. And for those of you who maybe missed the first part of the video or want to review what we did down in California, I'll leave that right after this introduction. But for those of you who might want to skip ahead and see the processing right away, I'll leave a timestamp right up here in the corner. Well, Brent's convinced me again to go down into his, into his silver mine. All right. We're doing it, huh? We're going to go look for gold today. Today we're looking for gold and I, uh, I have a good faith. You know, we have some good documents, we have some good leads. Um, hopefully this rope isn't necessary, but I'd rather <laughs> have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Absolutely. I don't like ropes either, so uh, hopefully we don't need it. And we got Dan looking on the surface today. Brent and I are going underground, and I hope we can find some gold. We're up in the hoist house again. We're chasing the stories from the old newspapers back in the 1870s that talk about gold being discovered in the dumps of the Union Mine. And they found some really rich gold ore down in the Jefferson chimney that they took out a bunch of gold. We're talking like thousands of ounces of gold. There's reports of nuggets being found up to 13 ounces, multi-ounce nuggets. Seems like there were many, many found in this super rusty brown quartz. The reason they didn't see them is because this quartz was so rusty and so oxidized that they didn't see the gold in it and they really discovered it by accident. So that's what we're gonna go down today and look for and it's just, shocking to me that if the numbers they're talking about in the newspapers are correct they pulled thousands and thousands of ounces of gold out of Cerro Gordo but it's not really documented as this big strike we got Steve going over to the hoist we got Gene's gonna watch us go down Brent I hate this thing <laughs> I feel like half my life is spent in this cage oh like a true miner <laughs> riding it up and down yeah well, we now got power. See over there, that's a little sneak peek. That is uh, power and internet. Oh, and it goes down Going the hole. All the way down. Oh, actually, sorry. Oh, you want to turn the power on? Yeah. Get out of the way. And now we have power. Yep. Lights power down the Union Mine. Lights are on. The lights are on. That goes all the way to the 900. Yeah. The string light. Yeah. Oh, no, that's like the, the string light are always are down there, but now we have like uh, we have outlets down there and everything. You have outlets? Yeah, outlets oh. and everything. <laughs> you can make coffee down there now? We can make coffee, charge cameras. Awesome. We can do it all. We're going? We're going. Okay. Hands clear, gentlemen. Wish me luck. Yep. Okay. We are ready to go down. <laughs> okay. Is Brent Radio working? This is Brent Radio is working. Let's head down. All right. Take care of the cats. <laughs> this is by far my least favorite part of visiting you. Yeah. If <laughs> you peek over that ledge, it's probably the least less enjoyable too. Yeah. You can see the uh, the ropes. If you really want to find that rope, now goes 900 feet down. Wow. And there's the ladder. This is our emergency escapeway, huh? Yes. If things go right wrong. Steady, looking good. Well, we only have to go down 86, 86 feet. feet. Yeah. It's easy today. Yeah, easy. Not the 400 quick, we usually go down. Trip. It goes down nine, 11, 900 feet. 900 feet. 900 feet, straight down. And the lights at the 86? Yep. Oh, we're, we're right there. So I'm saying easy. Quick it's like, trip. Yeah, two minutes. Quick trip. We only have to risk our life for two minutes today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, each way, I guess. So four each minutes way. total. I remember the first time we used the hoist, we went to the 86 level and it felt like going to the moon or something, you know, it just felt like, because nobody had been down here forever. Yeah. And just stepping off, it just felt like a whole new world. And now it's like, oh, it's nothing, you know, yeah, it's it's like 900 <laughs> feet down. Because I don't know if you, I mean, that's 10 times further. You yeah. Know? So it's just, um, yeah, I remember the first time I climbed. It's steady and we are looking good. I remember the first time I climbed 
a ladder to mine. Yeah. And we went 90 feet, and it felt like it was an hour and a half to climb it when it was really probably three minutes. Yeah. It's so different down here, especially the first time. Yeah, we made a couple upgrades, like I said, the power and our internet. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, well, just for better communication, and the power is just charging things, running power cords if we need to. Yeah. Well, and you're kind of, you were talking about setting up like... Yeah, base camp. Base camp down, yeah, down, down here, yeah. Oh, we're here already. You haven't been to the 86, right? I have not. Okay. No, 400 is my only level. You tell I'm Ooh, on the money. Perfect. Perfect. All right, lock it down. We'll see you in two hours. All right, you're locked in. See you in two hours. Done. And here we are. Welcome to the 86. Once upon a time called the Buena Vista Tunnel. The Buena Vista We've arrived at the 86. This is the oldest of the levels because as they went down, this was the first one they started. And we've got a little bit of a trek to go today. We've got we got a whole rabbit warren to get through. Yeah, we're going to the Jefferson Chimney, which is where the, all the ore body was. But to get there, we have to go beyond a collapse, which I know what the collapse is like. Jason does not, so. Yeah, the, I think the term you used was it's kind of sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The right way to describe it. Yeah. Um, we can take a shortcut. We'll actually go over here. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So this will, this might be helpful for you too. So like, there's the Jefferson chimney. Okay. So see, it's going from above the collar all the way down, almost to the 1100. And then that was the G the Union chimney, the one that I showed you that's collapsed. Mm. And so the 86, um, is also called the Buena Vista because that was one of the original ways that they got into it was through this Buena Vista tunnel. Okay. And then the thing that I read, I'll pull it out. Um, number one is 90 feet from the surface known as the Buena Vista tunnel. So that's that. Okay. And it says from which large quantities of high grade ore have been mined, but um, from the Bullion to the Jefferson in the south, a distance of 1200 feet. It was on this level at the Jefferson ore chute where a gold deposit was found amounting over $200,000 in specimens alone. At this level is caved in the Jefferson Chute. No effort has been made to develop the gold vein. It is contemplated that when the next level below is continued on the Jefferson Ore Chute, an effort will be made to find it. Okay. So, so that is where it was, essentially. So they, they, yeah, Jefferson. they found a ton of gold right here. Yes. And then they were going to come down a level, come up underneath and try and mine up on it. But it was ca it got caved up here somehow. Correct. And this is this is the surface workings map. Just, oh yeah, this is so very it's like, um, So this is the Jefferson like still, yeah. and this is the eighty six, I think. The the shaft. There it is. There's the shaft. There's the shaft. And this that's is the Jefferson here, and that's the Jefferson mm -hmm. still. And so our plan today is to to get down to the shaft and work our way all the way through here. Yeah. To the Jefferson. It's collapsed around right here. Okay. And then we're gonna go up and over, and then over, and then. We'll walk through here. There's dynamite here. Then we'll get to here. <laughs> there's just dynamite there. Yeah, no big and deal. And then that that purple stuff is like right here. Okay. Okay. So I'll be right above you. You'll yeah, be right above us. I'll do lots of hard stamp stomping. Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. Throw rocks down and the hole. This is another. This is another view on it that might be helpful. So like, this shows like, this is the Jefferson chimney here. Okay. And so this is the the Buena Vista, which is also the 86. And so the shaft comes down here. Oh yeah. And so we will be going over here. Collapses again right around here. If anything looks like gold, let me know. Okay, I'll, I'll give a holler. When you're mentioning if they were just transport mostly, but then you have stuff like that, like that rabbit hole goes up maybe like 100 feet. Oh, really? Yeah. Just just following whatever they were following. Whatever they were doing, yeah. And over here. Yeah. A lot more timber on this level. Yeah, this just just this one section. It seems that they might have issues with. This goes away. This is what we need to do in the Omega. Yeah. Yeah. Get the timbering going. We have a nice stack of rock there. There we go. We got a little friend here. Oh yeah, cool. Wow, he, a lot of bats. 
in here for the winter. How'd they make it all the way down here? Don't wake them up. Oh yeah, just little rabbit warrens that go everywhere. Looks like they were following this little seam right here. Following it up, see if it developed into anything. So this must be, is this the main, was this the Buena Vista access? That would have been the Buena Vista access, yeah. So that used to go all the way out. Correct. And then they covered it with a dump. Yeah. I guess they didn't need it anymore. And then That's cool. We are headed. Just holes and. Yeah, it goes down like 60 feet. Rat holes. And You've been all over this, I'm assuming. Every little bit. Every little nook. Well, this is like the iron roof. Yeah, that's exactly what they were talking about. Like that Sounds would like be. And see, there's this little slip here, this little fault. And this may be the trace of the Union and the Jefferson. Like, yeah. I'm kind of thinking they're in line with each other along strike. Okay. And so they may be like two huge pods yeah. within this fault zone or within this this area right. and so the miners were just following the the trace of the vein and, and it's real lensy so this is like a little lens but right. that's exactly what they were talking about in the prospectus and newspaper articles is that super brown yeah. rusty quartz and no one could see the gold in it because it was so rusty should we chip some of that off later yeah let's let's remember this spot because yeah. that is exactly what they were doing and then the, yeah and then right here they followed it up and chasing it. chasing it around i'm really curious to learn more yeah it goes up all over there i'm really curious to learn more about like gold in silver deposits yeah because typically i mean the the silver my understanding is the silver can replace the lead okay. in the galena lattice so right. as it's crystallizing out you can get the silver replace the lead, but the gold won't do that. Okay. And so typically the gold is the last thing to fall out of solution as these fluids are cooling. Okay. And so that's where the, you know, the galena was in place. It was getting deposited and, and making these huge pods. And then like the gold was like the last little thing to squeeze out in these little iron rusty pockets. Do you think they're like, because this looks like it was kind of intentional, right? Like they took out a lot of this. Absolutely, yeah. Do you think they were taking out that iron material or galena? Yeah, I don't know if it was galena, because that's not really what you see the galena in. It's, no. it's not yeah. in that rusty stuff. But it's definitely like a structure that you'd get excited if you were a miner. Right, they were like, seem to be following this thing up too. Yeah, absolutely. But this is this would be a good spot to come back and check, out like that. check out. Yeah. Well, not too far a journey to where we're going. Okay. Because I know what we're getting into. Don't I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm just nice. blindly following you. So this, this is fresh. This just fell from the ceiling. Oh. Because otherwise I would have stepped on it and put footprints on it. So. Yeah. So that's like a perfect example of this this little slip or this fault. Yeah. And and all these this is you call these slicken sides, so it's it's where the rock has rubbed against each other and okay. made these like scratches in the rock, but these are some beautiful slicken sides, in the kind of the clay gouge on the fault, but but this is, oh yeah and right up right up there, <laughs> bats everywhere in here, but this is this is where like it's the same structure yeah. that the the rusty stuff was in, right. but it's just pinched down to just a trace in the fault. And they kept following it. Let's go. Yeah, here's a nice rusty pocket. This is unusual, the bats. Yeah, there are these many bats in one cave. Right there. It's like to our left or our right above us. Yeah. I'm fine until they start moving. I don't really like it. When I... Yeah, I've been in a few spots where there's bats flying around. It's not real, it's not my favorite thing. All right, well. Here is our situation. Oh boy. So the head collapsed. And that's where we have to go up. Oh, okay. And that's so, not bad. Yeah. I wanted to oversell it because anyways, we got so you could see like the first time this was more curved up, and so I didn't I couldn't tell that there was anything up there. Yeah. I just saw it was a collapse and I had to turn around. But then when I got to the other side, I went up and over and I realized I was up there. So after I pushed around some rock, I was able to come down here. Okay. So once we go up and over this, it then leads, the tunnel continues. We get to the Jefferson chimney, maybe in like 
Um, 100 more yards, so it's pretty close. Okay, cool. I just need to hoist myself onto this without it flipping up. Go like this. Ooh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> and I can stand on the end after I get up here. Okay. And it looks like that same iron fault or veins going right through here. Like even I'm gonna throw you down something. Okay. Yeah, like that's the stuff they were talking about in the article. Is that rusty? It's yeah. quartz. Like there's definitely quartz there. Yeah. That super rusty quartz was where the gold was. There's so much. There's a big pocket right here as you're coming up. Okay. Um, we can, uh, yeah. We can grab some of that. Yeah, I'm back. But let me uh, get out of the way. It's a good thing we're both skinny guys. Yeah, I know. That's what this is a huge rock. If this rock falls, you have a big problem. This rock is very big. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you want, I'll like keep my feet on the end of this. Okay. And then, uh, all right, now it's my turn. Or it looks the other no, that's not a good idea. Yeah, I think the way I went because. You could try to just, we try to move these and just put the ladder up to here. Oh yeah. But there's that massive rock right there. Yeah. I, I think I can hop up there okay. where you did. Yep. All right. All right, I made it up. I gotta go through this little hole. And follow Brent. Do that okay maybe i shouldn't try and film myself oh. coming up through these holes well luckily once we slide down this up inside right here the shaft is pretty good again okay oh yeah that's not too bad you can imagine my excitement the first time i discovered this just wandering around i was like this is awesome so did you discover this the first time from the jefferson chimney yeah, side I came through the 86 many times. I couldn't understand that there was anything above that because uh -huh. that it was still more rock. I pushed some rock out to get it to this point, but then I came to the eight, from the Jefferson to this, and I went up and over. Then I was like, "Oh, if I pushed through there, and that's when it all kind of clicked." I see. But this is just a really nasty little fault zone here. The rocks all broken up and brecciated, and no wonder it collapsed here. I hope it doesn't do it more while we're down here. Okay. There. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. Here on out, it's pretty good. Pretty good. It is serious timbering in here. Yeah. See, there's another fault here then, the smooth rock. Yeah, probably. I think they followed the the fault all the way. All the way. Yeah. That's probably how they they followed it right to the Jefferson chimney. <laughs> what if they came down the yeah, the chimney? The Jefferson. There's so many bats. Look, there's like they're everywhere. Four right here. I never see how many. They're all sleeping. It's not quite tall enough to stand up in here. Just a little bit too low. And this was all done by hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hug the left side. You're basically either. Hug the left side, he says. Because this is the Jefferson chimney. Holy cow. Yeah. I'm on a false floor, which is also sketchy. You're on a false floor, okay. Down that way. But that, you roped down this? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And came over here. Oh man. 
I don't want to look down. Oh yeah. So that's where it caved right there? About 110 feet more yeah. down. Wow. But the, they said it was on the one of, so across here, so I'm not like, see, they're definitely doing something across it. That I don't know how I'll get to. Oh yeah, I see what you're talking about. So like, I don't even know how they were doing that working then, because unless the track was going across this, which would seem preposterous, because they didn't kind of have a bridge. Right. And so even these days, though, I don't know how I get there without, like I say, like go five feet, drill board, go five feet. Right. Um, but so the ore would have gone all the way up. So this is around where they're talking about in the newspaper. So if there's any area where that, and you can see more of those really crazy little. Oh yeah. Wow. Just... Somewhere in this vicinity is where the, um, around where they're talking about that 200 would be there. This is like the craziest thing. Yeah. This is like Lord of the Rings stuff. Yeah, it's, it's just, and, and it goes, it's like two or 300 feet above us. Of just open. Yeah. yeah, all the way to Dan. All the way to Dan. It's a, imagine just being on a rope going down that. This is, yeah, this is like, what, what was it, like the Mines of Moria or whatever, yeah. where it's like, it's just the craziest little rat holes. Yeah, it's just this just boggles my mind. This is just insane to me. So, but this is this is where the red. That's where they found all that gold. Two two hundred thousand dollars in specimens. It could. They said it collapsed by, so it could mean that collapse is like eighty feet down or whatever. Yep. But I imagine it was showing around here too. Right, and it's just like my. I expect like that. The bay, the bay, the bay. Yeah, like that. That looks pretty good. I expect that there's just a pod, there was like a pod somewhere on the margin of the of the ore body. Yeah. And that's where the gold like fell out. The chemistry was right, the temperature was right, the pressure, whatever. So it's like a huge blob of gold. Essentially. It was like the last of the fluids in the system. And it's were like, this this is my happy spot. But yeah. Be careful here too, because Yeah, because we don't I, have I put those on in the You put those on. <laughs> I'd love to know how this is timbered yeah. <laughs> it's like these these stalls just go off into nothing so they must have a cross timber to where you're at but what does that look like and right so i don't know if that was using like some of like like a like a hoist tie off or something there's like a rope hanging there and man this is something else here i should let me get dan's high powered flashlight oh, yeah. and see what that does for us and while we're using Dan's fancy light, I think I'm working it right. And now we've got light. So this is, wow. Yeah. That's looking up, straight up. <laughs> Look at those stalls, just, yeah, just, hanging just out. yeah. And you roped down this. Uh-huh. So that was something. That's something, yeah. And then it goes down. You can kind of see where the collapse is. Like down to there, yeah, yeah. And that might have been what they're talking about. And that's where the pocket of specimen gold was. Mm -hmm. Wow. But that's what interests me, like there's, like what was going on over there? How did they even get over there? Yeah, how'd they get over to that, that area? And then, like, I don't, I don't see like much galena. Is there, do you see any? No, there's a, there's a bunch, when I went down there, there's a bunch on the floor. That could have been from anywhere along this. Okay. But I don't know. Just falling down. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like this is, you know, you can see on the wall, there's the trace of the, the slip or the vein. And then there must've been just like this huge lens of galena right in here. To make it worth following all this out. Dude, I've like I've never even heard of a stope like this. Yeah. Like most sto stopes are like fairly organized. They leave a bunch of pillars. No, this, is just, this is just like they're going for this it. is just craziness. <laughs> yeah. But because what I'm wondering is like, so let's assume this whole thing was filled with galena, right? Okay. How are they getting into the middle there? Right. You know? Right. How are they getting up 20 feet? Well, and it, yeah, and it doesn't, like from the look of it, if you were going to mine, I think it's called under over overhand stoping, 
which has come up from the bottom, yeah. you'd have all this infrastructure because you'd have timbers in there that you're right. standing off of, mining off of. It looks like this they mined straight down <laughs> and they just left a huge hole over their head with a few stalls where they thought it was, you know, quote unquote dodgy. Yeah. But they just like mined straight down. Everything probably came up and out. And it's just this huge, like it's weird it, when you're underground, like I'm looking straight up and then I pan down and you kind of get, di like yeah, you, you lose, you yeah. lose your orientation or your balance a little bit. Because it's hard to imagine that this was like just solid earth, you know? Yeah. That's what I just don't. Yeah, this, they, like every, like this was all carved out of, of yeah. solid rock. And they left the sparkly limestone and took all the galena. So, what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is anything looking, or is it rusty or is it more like where we just came from? It was better. Like, like that, that spot right there kind of looks like the rusty okay. brown stuff. Yeah. I don't know about up here. That looks mostly like limestone. I wonder, there's no way to get like down from here other than ropes. Correct, yeah. Correct. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to look around and find a good spot. Like like the honestly the best spot was that brown stuff we saw over by the Up collapse. Over, yeah. But I'm definitely I'm definitely more like this is where it was found, right? Yeah. They're just they're just poking around looking. This is also another shoot up. Oh, up? Yeah. Or down when they came down. If you look up, it's really Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. So where does that go? Like, does there's that... Like a, there's like a tiny ledge in between this and that, and that goes to that ledge. Oh, wild. They were, they were doing something. Okay, so probably what they did, I've actually heard about this, where they'll, they'll do a shaft or a level yeah. uh, up, like, beside the deposit. Okay. And then all the, there's probably like three or four different access points into the, yeah. so they would mine down and then bring it, they, they develop this. Yeah. And then as they mine down, they just bring it to each one of these little ledges and drop, drop it down, down here. here. And then there's track probably like right here. Right. And out to the, out yeah. to the skip. So that's, that's probably what they did is they, they developed this and then just mine straight down. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Cool. So I'll show you one other cool thing this way. What does that say? It says Jefferson Diobase Dyke. Oh, Diobase Dyke, yeah. It seems like they were trying to... Looks like they moved it. They, they dug into it twice. Yeah. This we... Jefferson Chimney Stope. Okay. This is about where the purple stuff is. Because the... Because yeah. I roped in here, and then you can also rope in from over here. But So when we go left, we're going to be hugging this left side, and then you go around it, and you're looking across, but so the little track would be over here. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, so I think we can get to that. Because it's where they have these... Steven, you remember what dye base is? I don't, is it like this... Uh, it, it's like a like a basalty thing. Yeah, like more of a mafic like, dye. Yeah, mafic yep. stuff. Yep. That's and so where you have this mafic dike come up and it and the chemistry works with the limestone and some it, you might get some really cool minerals that's why maybe you're seeing that fluorite yeah, right. over there yeah, that's what so they this is this is where the diabase dike was correct yeah that's what they're hitting at the very end okay so that's i want to i want to check that out too and then also over here is where all that purple rock is oh yeah the purple rock it's really cool. Yeah, cool. I like it. yeah. In the 30. And so, starting here, so here, you can see where I was, uh, doing my little crazy this one. Oh, yeah. It's just all purple. Yeah. And I think it goes way further back. It's just dirty because, like, I chipped off a little bit. Oh, yeah, there's some yeah, here. There. And so, and it goes down to there. And then this whole wall is this purple stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we should we should work here a little bit. Another little seam. What's going on here? This is the diabase. This is that. Okay. So this is like a mafic dike that just like 
came up into the limestone because this is limestone this is diabase okay. and then this is limestone again and we have a black light now whoa oh. <laughs> Is it, I don't know if it's picking up on the mic camera. Are you getting it? No, it's not picking up on mine. Wow, it's so cool. it's wild. How do we get that on camera? It's just like a... What color is that? Actually, can you turn that on? You can almost see it better in the light. Can you? Yeah. It's like a dark, dark, dark purple, isn't it? It's like... it's like, Yeah. All right, let me turn back on that with the light. Um, oh, yeah, whoa! Yeah, can you see it now glow? That looks so cool. Oh, and that's like more aqua colored almost. Oh, this bit up here. That, that doesn't seem to glow yeah. like the other. Does it Does it hold it? You know oh, I mean? like like the Smithsonite? Yeah. Let's see, Where's where was that spot? Okay. And then... I guess I got to turn my light off for that part. It does, or a little bit does of it. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Let's see, let's see if I can just turn it off. It's almost like the stuff down here was holding it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's that kind of green afterglow. Get it charged up a little bit. And that's what the Smithsonite was doing. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. Well, we should take some of this out and get it back up top. I just got a piece here. Let's. The big reveal. Oops, not ready. What do we got? Ooh, a good one. Oh yeah, that looks. Look that really dark purple. Cool. It looks like like meat almost or something. Yeah. That's so cool. Super deep, deep purple. Yeah. I wonder. Uh, do you have that? The oh, yeah, it. yeah. Uh, I wonder if this particular bit glows any different than the other ones. Okay, I'll turn mine off. Well, oh, yeah, it's, it's like pink. Whoa. And then, like, wait a minute. Wow. I wonder why it's so many different colors. It's like pink and orange. And I wonder if that'll hold it, like we were talking about. Like, what? It does for a little, little bit. A little bit, yeah. There's a little flash of. All sorts of colors on the ground too. You see those? Yeah. Well, purple flex. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a UV yeah, expert. That's that's where that's where Dan would Dan say that. Oh yeah, the red's calcite and the purple's fluorite or something. It's definitely a bunch of different colors. Anything on this side? Yeah, it glows. Glows purple. Crazy. Will it pick up? Will it pick up the color in the light if I just kind of? Yeah, it's still picking up pretty good. Yeah, that's all glowy. And this is the red stuff? Yes. Well, that's weird. Well, I got it off of that spot right there. Oh, yeah, that, look at that. Yeah. Oh, wow, that peak there, that there. That there. Just all glows purple. <laughs> Your turn. All right. <laughs> I got decent, decent little haul going on. I got all the easy stuff. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how it goes. That's how it goes. I like it. It's like it feels different too. Here it's like more like almost like, like a purple brisket or something. I think it's all over here too. I think all of this is it. You see like there's some in Can there. You get over like get that piece off. Yeah. Get over there. All this lower stuff is a little bit more like splintery. It's yeah, like, like like that brisket marbled, yeah. marbled looking stuff. Like that seems to be the harder stuff, but it's. A little harder. It's definitely got the more yeah, purple in it. There. Yeah, like that. Is that a really cool piece there. We can try your little your little hammer drill if you want. Just go around it or something. Oh, yeah. Or I don't know. Keep knocking off the yeah. yeah. Who knows? It's almost like see how it like kind of comes down here. I wonder if it kind of goes away there. Hmm. What do you think? Do you think we should uh, 
go find some gold. Yeah, let's let's look for some gold. Let's go some, I think we got a good sample of this. Take it back up. Yep. Dan will probably like that a lot. Yep. But remember, there's a race on to see if you can get much gold, and we're we're at zero right now. We're at zero. So we're not even. We haven't even started. Find some gold. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> now we're going back up and over the collapse. Hopefully, it's easier. Okay, I'm not going to film this part so I can actually do it as safe as possible. Brent is working his way down the teeter-totter board. Now it's my turn. Ooh. I can barely fit. Hello. You like this stuff, you think? Yeah. I don't know if I want to pick on it right here, though. Right. Can I throw it down? There was like a there was a huge lens of it not too far from here, right? Okay. Yeah. Let's yeah, let's go back. All right. I mean we can always climb back up here if we want to. Yep. But okay. that's the that's the like dark brown. Yeah, that's like put that in your pocket or in your mouth okay. or something. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Is that what do we got here? Like three. Yeah, I think it's um I think that's more limestone -y stuff though. I don't know. Yeah. Right, well, I'll depart and go down and then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good luck. Yep. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Can I just hand it down to you? There you go. All right, here I come. <laughs> yeah. Easy. Easy, easy. I made it. Yeah, that's the. This is the one I want. Okay. I think. <laughs> yeah. A uh, little area that's almost all like this type of rock. That maybe there was, and they scoped it out too. I can show you that. Okay. Yeah. Let's maybe check that out. Because uh, like there were, they were definitely. All on that there. Yeah, they were definitely interested in this area and the and the rusty rock. Yeah. There's kind of a room of rusty rock. It wasn't there. Another very interesting scope situation they had done. Okay. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and see this. Well, no, it's probably all still going out through the Buena Vista. Yeah. Because I was thinking this is the stuff that they would have been like on the dump in the 70s, yeah. 1870s, that they were working. But I think the stuff they were reworking in the dump was from older probably, huh? Yeah. Is this stuff the yellow orchard? They're talking about a different mine, but is that yellow orchard or whatever it's called? I don't think so. Okay. I think that's I think that's called limonite. Okay. Don't quote me on that. Nope. But I think it's like a an iron, just like iron oxide essentially. Oh, yeah, like there's some really good looking stuff around. Yeah. I wonder like, I, I'm not minor or anything, but like, so at the narrowest part of this column that I left, seems to be that band of yellow, right? So 
So like, does that mean they're trying to get the most of that? Or is that just how that rock happens to be? Um, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know. Like yeah. that, that pillar doesn't, I, I don't even know why they left it. That's not yeah. holding up anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that could have been, they like chased the good all the way down to that pinch point. <clears throat> have you been up in there? Yeah. <laughs> it just is this. Up there, there's like a little bit bigger of a room. Okay. But the wall kind of just like this. Like heavy dust. You know? it's yeah, it's all, it's all just dusted out. But it's like for me, here's like, this, this is what I would think that yellow ochre stuff is. Okay. And I believe that's lead oxide. Okay. Like, was was this you chipping this? No. Because somebody was in here. Oh, yeah, chipping that chipping out. Chipping that out. Maybe they're looking at yellow ochre. Maybe. Because the other mine is the one that said that was the highest grade stuff, but that was the different mine. Okay. Over by the Belmont. Okay. Because it, it doesn't make sense to me, really, that they would... I don't know. <laughs> but... But like to, to mine for 10 years and not know you have gold right. just blows my blows my mind. Yeah, right. Those are um manganese dendrites or okay. manganese fans. It's pretty cool. Those are those are those are good ones. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's some good ones. This is this is hot. Like this is yeah, really exciting. Yeah. We should work on this a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because like all this looks like that red streak there is that's that's good. I like that. Okay. This stuff too, maybe. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't. The the problem is, is it doesn't look like quartz. Yeah, that doesn't look like quartz. No, it's just like the other the other thing to to mention, and I don't know if this is, but like, we're basically we're combining two articles, right? So the article about the quartz, rusty quartz, was from eighteen seventy five. Okay. And then the thing that talked about the Jefferson chimney was from 1910, but it doesn't mention the quartz anymore. You know, it just says gold. It doesn't say. So we're basically combining those articles, which it's probably the same minerals. Right? Yeah, yeah. But there, those were two different articles that said those two different things. I guess. So the gold specimens on the Jefferson were from 1910. That article was from right. 1910. Yeah. The 200,000. Yeah, that was from 1910. Oh, it was okay. And then the 1871 was the free nuggets in the quartz in the dump. In the dump, right? Okay. And so they could be the same. It could be quartz down here, but it could be not quartz down here. You know, because they yeah. didn't specify quartz in the 1910 article. Yeah, yeah. Just throwing it out there. Well, yeah, I think let's let's get like the rustiest, reddest stuff we can find. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, at this point, like let's let's super high grade and then yeah. at the end we can just like load a bunch of rocks onto the hoist. Even if we have to send it up without us. Yeah. yeah I don't like know. That. There's Somebody is chipping away at that or something because like, why is there more red on the ground? Or is that just you? Like, no. Uh, no, that wasn't me. Yeah, you can see where people were, were chipping at it. It's just like clay. Yeah, totally decomposed. So there'll be gold in that, you think? Um, maybe. Yeah, right. I mean, it certainly has the the iron oxidation. Right. That you look for. Okay. That's really right up there. Yeah, this is this is like really good looking stuff. All right, we'll get a, yeah, let's get our handmade bag. No I don't think I brought a bucket either. No, why? Why would we? Yeah, why? <laughs> why would we need one of those? We really talked about you know bringing a bunch of bucket. Yeah. Or we could have those guys send a couple down too. Yeah. That's true. I don't know where I am, so I have to follow you. Oh yeah. To get um, out of it. The back of that way is the main shaft. Yeah, okay. Backs and all that. Back here. And don't don't disturb the bats. Did you want to go to our bags? Or do you want to go to the hoist? Let's let's go to our bags yep. and uh, we'll we'll see if we can get some of that red stuff there. Okay. Yeah, I, I like the diversification idea. We'll just kind of get as much as we can from. Different places. All right, we found this spot right here that has a bunch of quartz in it. Really, really rusty. This is this is the first spot we found that has a bunch of quartz, so we're pretty excited about it. So Brent's going back to get a bucket and a bag. But this is the stuff I would, this is the stuff the newspaper article talked about. 
So we're gonna get we're gonna get some of this stuff for sure. And hopefully we can get some gold out of it. Brent's working our seam here. For those gold nuggets. Yeah, we well, yeah, just pull out the nuggets. You can leave yeah. the rest. Leave the rest. Yeah, hopefully we don't get more than we bargained for there. <laughs> Here's our stuff. What is that? A little flake on my thumb. Where did it go? Here? Yeah. I don't think it's gold. Oh, look at look at this one though. <laughs> yeah, what is that? It's not it's not like metallic enough. I don't okay. think. Like pyrite or something? Yeah, I don't know. I'll get the. Let me get a loop. Actually, that's that's pretty interesting there. So this is we're crawling up this little rat hole here. And I'm seeing some really good quartz on the walls. This goes up like 45 degrees or more. Okay, let's see if we can get up here and film at the same time. And like uh, all of that. Yeah, this stuff. Right. This is the quartzy stuff. This stuff right here. Oh yeah, that looks good. Let's get that. Yeah. See that? Right. That's good looking stuff. Sorry, there's falling that up. Uh, yeah, it's just this, it's a little vein. Yeah. Of it, and they just followed, followed it up. I might climb up there a little bit farther. Yeah. And just look. Uh, do I really want to do that? <laughs> let me go. Let me go see what I can see. Oh, well, we've got a bucket of really good looking stuff. Yep, I hear you. We're going up. Check in on Dan. Get some lunch. I think we might be back down for more. So, yeah. Yep, we're in the cage. Yeah, I think there's some, some good other pockets to get. Alright, I'm bringing you up. Here we go. <laughs> we're headed up. Headed up. A lot quicker than the 400. Yes. I made it. Alright, stop. Perfect, right on the money. Sweet. Okay, we'll get unloaded. The second shift is going in. We're going back for more. I gotta ride my favorite skip down. I'll let you go first. Okay. Alright. We're back. Shift number two. We're ready to hit up this seam here. I think the plan is Brent's gonna go up this little rat hole right here. Yep. Get some bigger stuff, roll it down to me, get some fine stuff in the bucket. We've got buckets, we've got more buckets. Oh, you brought your chisel? You have your chisel? I got a chisel, yeah. Cool. I'll just bring this rock hammer then. We have that other little bar thing, what was it called? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Let's see what, let's see what I got in here. You want that? Yeah. All right. Okay. There he goes, bring back the gold. Go and find some gold. Well, my plan is, is I'm hoping I can talk Brent into letting me bring back a couple buckets to my shop, run them through my system and see if I can recover any gold out of the stuff. I do think once we get these buckets back up to the surface, we'll crush five or 10 pounds through Brent's little crusher, pan it out, see what we can find. But I'm hoping to have a second video in the series, crushing up this ore at my place smelting it down and seeing if I can recover any gold. I'm pulling out some really, really good looking stuff. It's super oxidized. I think a lot of this rainbow stuff is probably old copper. It's just little quartz stringers in this oxidized zone. Super, super heavy oxidation. It's exactly what you'd be looking for. I've got about a bucket and a half of it. I've been mining this little seam right here, right along here. It's super easy. It just drops out of there once you start picking on it. So I hope we're in a good spot. I was kind of thinking about coming over here too, where it gets all ravelly, but 
It looks a little too, a little too sketchy in here to start picking on the, on the back. Brent's up the rat hole, I haven't heard from him, so hopefully he's doing good. So this is like the easiest hand mining I've ever done. The host rock, this limestone, which is altered now, is just so soft I can just pick away at it with my little rock hammer and expose the vein. But it looks like when this was in place, it altered the limestone on this side, but here it's really hard still. It breaks out of there pretty easy, but it's still competent limestone. But I mean, I can, like literally with this thing, I can just, I've mined a couple buckets in five minutes. You don't even need to drill and blast. You can just hand, hand work it. It's all broke up. There's some good looking stuff. So there we go, we'll fill up more buckets. More really good stuff. See the purples and the reds down here. There's some, there's a really cool little pocket right there. Some purple oxidation down in here. We got some stuff. Yellows and greens and blues and oranges and reds. Even if there's no gold in it, it's still cool looking. Well, I think what we're seeing here is this vein is an old quartz vein that came in. Full of sulfides, a lot of iron, obviously, because it's so, so red and rusty. But I'm, I'm talking a little bit out of school here because I, I, in Washington, we don't experience this because our mountains are so young and it's been glaciated. But I think we're in the oxide zone. And what that means is this mountain range has been here for a long, long time. It's been uplifted and the groundwater has trickled through the mountain over hundreds or thousands of millions of years. And whoa, bat. And has oxidized all of the sulfides that came in this vein. And what that does is it turns all the sulfides into oxide. So iron sulfide goes to iron oxide, copper sulfide goes to copper oxide, and that's why you get the azurites and the malachites and the, the uh, iron rust staining. But the precious metals, the silver and the gold, won't come out of solution. They, they, they're, not, they're not soluble, they don't oxidize or anything. So the hope is, is that there's a bunch <laughs> a bunch of precious metals in there that now that it's been all oxidized now that they're they're free mill essentially and when we crush them up we'll be able to see the gold well brent just tossed some stuff down to me that looks really good all that malachite and again we're in that that oxide zone where the copper is oxidized and i think malachite's actually a carbonate but it used to be a sulfide and now it's transferred into a carbonate. So it's been weathered and gold and copper tend to stick together. So this is really, really good stuff. Let's go up Brent's little rat hole here and see what, see what he's up to. Okay, coming up. Oh, it's tight in here. Well, you're way up there. Yeah, I'm surprised in that article they didn't talk about any of the other, I mean, other than the rust. Right. They didn't mention any copper or anything like that. Okay, I'm coming up to you. Yep, I'm going to stay still. Okay. This is like 55 degrees or more up. Oh, okay, hold on. Oh. All right. With a heavy bucket, it was fun going down. I bet. Actually, can you grab that little poker stick that I had in the bucket? Yeah. Oh, you've been, like, you've been knocking down a bunch of this. Oh, it's on the floor, too, yeah. Dusty stuff. What do you got? Yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, that's, oh, God. <laughs> that's the stuff. Right there. Uh oh, let me get on top. Yeah. How do I get up there? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That cape like right there. In this, like, clay stuff. 
Oh, look at how red that is, or, yeah. or orange. And like when I'm going up, I see tons of old pick pickaxe marks in this clay. I don't know if it's just because I can't see it when it hits this, but there's all over this clay there. Yeah, I don't think I don't think this was mined with with like dynamite. Yeah, just just hand cobbed. Crazy. Hand hand. Yeah. Chipped out of here. It's cr like it's crazy. That's a really good piece. Yeah. I like that piece. So we came out of this little pocket right here. And it was like in the clay. So Brent's been working this kind of like clay seam. Yeah. And you're pull that's where you're pulling out that malachite? Yeah, malachite came out of that pocket right there. Okay. A bunch of it. And then all these, we were looking at like these pick marks. They're not, that's not you. No. That was somebody else. Yeah, before me. Doing some, and there's a bunch at the very end of the tunnel. They're all over the face of it. They're just they're just scraping, yeah. scraping, scraping. scraping, scraping. Yeah, I mean this looks so good. Yeah. Yeah, there's another piece of the malachite. Oh yeah. Yeah, that looks looks so good. All right, well, let's get these buckets. Yep, back to the hoist. Back to the hoist. We've got our four buckets. Brent got his from up that rat hole. I got a couple from here in my seam. I think it looks pretty good. I like it, yeah. There's some cool stuff in here now. Hopefully there's some gold within all of these four buckets. Yeah, I hope so. Mm -hmm. My thought was uh, that like maybe when they were doing their initial mining, they were just looking for silver, you right. know? Yeah. So they came through, they didn't even bother with stuff like this. Yep. And then maybe this little rat hole you climbed up with some guy that came back in the 30s or yeah. 40s or whatever and was like, trying to find something yeah but uh i was also thinking about when they were doing the silver they were were they were they crushed they weren't crushing it down they were just like throwing chunks in the furnace right uh yeah pretty much so they like because with there's no there's no stamp mill or anything like that yeah there was no they weren't concentrating yeah. anything so they, they would never have seen gold come out yeah. they'd never even think about it it'd just be gone in the waste like if they weren't processing if this has gold right and no galena, they would have just tossed it. Yeah, it never would have gone in the furnace. Right, yeah. And so that's what I was thinking. Maybe that's why they missed the gold is they just, they weren't processing yeah. in a way that would have clued them into that there was gold around. Right, I guess if they were making tens of millions of dollars of silver every year, there was like, good enough. Who cares? Yeah, good enough. Yeah, well, and the other thing that occurred to me is in the 1860s and 70s, they were only after the silver and they yeah. didn't care about anything else. Right. And then in the teens and 20s and 30s, it was like zinc boom. Zinc, yeah. And and so they, they, in the early days, they didn't care about zinc at all. And then there was this whole yeah. other economic, yeah. so maybe it'll be a gold mine next. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, well, let's get back to the yep. hoist and we'll get this stuff up. Yep. 1912. We have an artifact, 1912. A newspaper. That's that is awesome. Yeah. We're well, just gonna walk it over it. Yeah, just stomping on it. So that's from the zinc. Yeah, era. From zinc. When they started doing zinc. Yeah. Probably brought it down for their toilet paper or something. Yeah. Yeah. But that shows they were they were kind of like reworking this level. Yeah, they're poking around. Yeah. We're going up. Yes. Our loaded buckets, bags, coats, hammers. Gold. Gold. <laughs> up. Yeah. Up. <laughs> <laughs> we got some ore. Nice. We got a lot of ore. A lot of ore. A lot of good looking Thanks. stuff. Oh, well, you guys did better than I did today. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Perfect. We're going to test the crusher. Let's see if it goes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beauty. Here's our pan of crushed down stuff. Now we'll pan it out and see if we get any gold. We don't have it crushed down fine enough. So maybe only 10% of the gold got liberated because see how coarse it is? Because we just don't have the fine crushing ability here. But we probably liberated some. And so that's our goal is to get down to the fines in the bottom. I'm gonna just scrape this off the top 
because there's no gold. All the gold that's free mill has been shaken down to the bottom. So we'll work our way down and see if we get a little smile in the bottom of the pan here. And if you can tell by the very low light out here, it's almost dark. It's, we gotta hurry up. Close to gold. If there's gold, we're getting close to it. I like the look of what you have there with that very heavy irons. Very yeah. heavy irons in there. And that fine white stuff. Fine white stuff again, yeah. Silver looking stuff. Yeah. I wonder if it's actually made of silver. In that oxidized vein, it could be, huh? I see one piece I like the looks of. It just climbed to the top. Yep. Oh boy. I do see some silver that I like, silver color that I like. That would be worth sucking up and putting in a cupel. Oh, you got a ton of cupels. I don't have a snuffer bottle. I've got a snuffer bottle in my backpack. Would you like it? Yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and again, this is like, we may have got 10% liberation with that right. crusher. Absolutely. So we are just looking for anything. If we yeah. get anything, it's a success. Yep. If it fits, it ships. We'll see you guys back at my shop. So we just got the articles about the gold and the first headline says streets of Cerro Gordo paved with gold uh, nice. as the headline. It says all of Cerro Gordo is excited and out at work on the dumps in front of the Union Mine. Our junior was shown a piece of gold or rather a nugget by Mr. Mr. Pritzler at Lone Pine that weighed 13 ounces, two thirds of which were pure gold. Many other pieces were sent down as specimens worth from $50 to $80 a piece. This gold was thrown out with the refuse and casting and casing in getting the silver ore. Everybody is immensely excited and truly Cerro Gordo is paved with gold. And that article is from um, 1875. So if the pieces were like 80 bucks in 1875. Yeah, that's like four but, ounces. But like 13 ounce, that's, that's huge. It's huge, um, it's a pound. There's a second one the Cerro Gordo Gold Find. Some two weeks since we made mention of a rather exciting discovery of the gold on the dumps of some silver lead mines at Cerro Gordo. Since then, we have seen a very fine specimen of about three ounces of weight being quartz and gold in, equal, in nearly equal proportions. It is found in quartz boulders of nearly uniform shape, but of all sizes. The boulders containing the gold are heavily coated with iron rust or something of that nature, so much so that no metal has been seen or suspected to exist in the quartz until some months ago when some Mexicans working the lead mine um, by contract happened to break a rich piece exposing the gold. The discovery was kept a secret for a long time, it seems, at, at least so far as the owners of the mine, Belshaw and Co., were, were concerned. In, in that period, the Mexicans, it is said, managed to get away with about $3,000 of rich specimens. It was soon found that much of this quartz was, had been thrown out on the waste dump of this and other mines or tunnels by containing a silver deposit. Hence, these dumps um, are being picked through. <laughs> Although it is rather remarkable to find rich nodules of gold quartz in a lead mine, it is quite likely that this gold quartz has therefore contributed much to the value of the lead bullion from the Cerro Gordo furnaces and that it will continue to do so thereafter. That's 1875 too. So quartz boulders with iron on top. Yep, that, that actually means a lot. Okay. It does. It does, especially the fact that they couldn't see any metal in it. Yeah. So we did see quite a few up there that it was a very dark red, almost black rock, but wherever it's been rubbed by something, you can see it's quartz underneath. Right. Those would definitely be targets now. Okay. Metal detector. And the detector, if, if it's talking pieces of ounces, yeah. a, my detector will find that at two feet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It'll zing that thing like... So maybe even that boulder we saw on the wash. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Cracking. Yeah. I'm here for three days. I might do three days of metal detecting yeah, now yeah. I see that. Yeah. 
And the way the material is coming off the hill, too. Yeah. If we find anything, yeah. we can very quickly limit it to, a, like, a 30-degree mm -hmm. angle going uphill. Right. Uh -huh. It's not going to move sideways. It's only going to move down. So right. if we find anything lower, we can start tracking it back up the hill easy. We're headed up to the Jefferson chimney now. Gonna go look for gold. Yeah, from my reading, there's a report um, that showed that they pulled about $200,000 worth of gold from this area in 1910. And so there was some gold there at one point. That would be a lot of gold a lot in of gold. 1910. Yeah, 1910 money. Making our way there. I should remember where it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one of these one of these trips, huh? It's up here somewhere. It's up there. The scary part is you don't really know where it is until you're right on top of it. This is just like a walk in the park for Brent. Dan and I are up at 8,500 <laughs> feet just dying. <laughs> it's hard. Here's the other thing you look for for gold ore. Okay. That's called a gossan. Okay. So that's um, a sulfide, so a iron pyrite or something like that, yeah. that has oxidized and rotted away, leaving only things that won't oxidize. Okay. And gold doesn't oxidize, so it would leave the gold there. Right. And this is sort of like a matrix of silica. So it's a matrix of quartz, kind right. of like a sponge. Yeah. It's called a gossan, and those awesome. are great for finding gold in. All right. So we got a good, a good something. Well, this like volcanic looking stuff. Well, I think they must have been smelting of some sort up here okay. because I have seen a lot of slag okay. uh, kicking around too, and that's possibly what that is. This stuff right here, this pile, uh -huh. looks amazing. Oh. All right. Looks amazing. $200,000 worth. Right here. <laughs> yeah. It's all, it's all that sponge. It's all rock, rock right. sponge. Gold prospecting in a silver mine. Absolutely. <laughs> I just found gold in my copper mine. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Nice. It's around. Yeah, like this this kind of stuff. Absolutely. This all looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, this Take kind of, of stuff. It. Crush it. <sighs> We're going to find some gold yet. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. What do we got here? Oh. Yeah. Should have brought a hammer with us. Yeah, a rock hammer. Yeah. Definitely have copper up here, too. Oh, yeah. Copper. Nice. This is where the chimney is. Behind that, so that fin rock. Again, you can't really see it from here, but once you get up there, you'll, you'll see just this dramatic drop off. It's just a hole it, yeah, just, right there? That's it? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Seems like an odd place for a hole to be. Yeah. It's like some, I mean, you guys might know better than me, but apparently, I guess, I assume it's like a crack that got filled in with the Galena. Because apparently the entire, from a surface deposit down 1,100 feet was all pure Galena. And most of the mine, like the vast majority of the ore that came out of Cerro Gordo came out of the Jefferson chimney. Oh, okay. So it's just a huge pocket. A huge pocket went all the way down. All the way down. Did they pull it out the surface right here? I think at first they were pulling surface deposits. Yeah, that's like, from my understanding, it was a surface deposit then went way down. And I think that from then on, they started sinking the shaft, like I was saying, like kind of between these two, to then mine up, you know, let it go down and all that. Yeah, because we're, I don't know, what, 100 or 200 feet yeah, above the okay. shaft. Yeah. So I, can have you come up this? So this, I've, I've, I've roped down into this and I roped down and then I got to this level and then I went and I realized that I was on the 86 level behind a collapse that you can't get to from the main hoist. So I was behind a collapse. Um, and so you roped down like 300 feet to, yeah, to the 86 it, level. It's a weird, it took about 700 feet of rope. So we were doing like little zigzags to like oh. go straight down. Um, Cause they've left little, um, what are they called like pillars? Pillars, yeah. Along the way down, so that way the rock, I guess, didn't fall on itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we we would rappel onto a pillar, hang out, put the rope around that pillar, we could go down the other way, kind of shoots and ladders. We've made it up to the Jefferson Chimney Portal Collar. Crack in the earth. earth. Hole of doom here. <laughs> I love it. Go over there. You start. You can. I'm open to look in there. Whoa. It just kind of goes and goes. You can see there's even those columns. Like I was saying. Yeah, those pillars. Those pillars. Man. Yeah. It uh. 
I don't know how I get in there. And what you mean over there in the middle, but you can kind of start seeing the pit of death, basically. Oh, boy. <laughs> and the terrifying part of this is we came upon this one hiking from above. Oh, so like, yeah. <laughs> you're hiking down the hill, do, 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 and then, you know, this isn't wider than what, like four or five feet? Yeah. If you, if you would have come down and slipped <laughs> right down. So this was like the discovery. This, this is was, where it all yeah. happened. So started. This, there was a surface deposit somewhere around here-ish. And then they started going down. And this was the big, the big strike. I think it was 1,100 feet down. Such a small exposure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, if, and it's like behind this space. So it, it feels very crazy that they discovered this. Here. Right, right here. Yeah. Oh, I got some gloves. Been two years. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead. Wow, that is a long way down. So you rope down. Yeah, tied up to that bush right there. That bush, that yeah. little, what is that? A bush, yeah, desert bush. Yeah, like a, a Fedra plant. And How just, far down does this go? Uh, 1,100 feet. 1,100 feet straight down of lead. Tied off to the bush and then just went down to yeah, the tight. next pillar. Or... For it. That looks like a very solid bush to tie off to. It's got deep roots it's in the very desert. very solid, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Avoided the barbed wire. <laughs> Man. But yeah, there's like a, so you go down and then about 50 feet down, they drove a, um, an edit that way for some reason. They started oh. going this way, back maybe towards the surface, but it doesn't go all the way to the outside. And then that one, it goes back maybe like 100 feet. There's a bunch of uh, just cases of dynamite still that I think they just didn't want to deal with. So they okay. stacked them. So then, then you go down more and then it kind of gets into like a very narrow little bit. And then you go, and then it opens up huge, like this massive cavern that's probably like 80 feet across and like 100 feet tall that you get to. And then from there, it continues kind of in this type of situation, going down and down and down. And then it opens up again to just this massive opening that's, like I said, like hundreds of feet, probably like 80 feet across. And then on that level, I saw um, track. And so then I went onto the track, and then I started going along the track, and I realized that. I was on the 86, but behind a collapse that I couldn't get to from the main shaft. So we got to the shaft, we got to the collapse, and then I was behind that collapse. So I kind of triangulated where I was. Oh, wow. And so we got to there. Um, yeah, it took... Is this the one where at some point it's collapsed in with big rocks this and, is, this is and plugged yeah, somewhere? Yeah, this is it. Oh, yeah, so about, I would say 100 feet below the 86, so maybe, well, how far are we above this? Like, 400 feet below this, uh -huh. there's some big boulders that have kind of like wedged themselves together that make getting past that difficult. Okay. Um, I imagine that there may be a way of moving stuff around, but I think over time things are falling in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and so. Yeah, the earth doesn't like holes in, yeah, inside. In this crack. And it's up here somewhere they say that there's some gold showing. Correct, that, yeah. And uh, the, at, old, at the collar, at the surface here. Yeah, there's a prospectus showing that they were trying to raise money. They said they had just pulled about that amount, $200,000, out of this area, and that they were raising some money to potentially further develop it. And from my understanding, that they never raised the money to further develop it. Okay. Huh. And here we are. And here we are. But I wonder, too, like, even looking at this now, like, I don't, I wonder where that seam of Galena was, you know? I think you're standing on it. Like right here, basically? I think so, yeah. It's like went straight across. Because that looks intentionally left. Right? Yep, pillar for sure. So they left that. What are these, stoles? Is that the name of these? Stoles, yep. So they put some stoles in. But then, like, why isn't there Galena in the pillar? Yeah, right. There, sh there should be. Right. I bet you there is. It's just oxidized and yeah, weathered. weathered and away. You can't really see that that's right. what you're looking at. It might be all that that black, that black stuff. Yeah. Yep, might be the Galena seam. Yeah. And I it, bet you if you dug down here, you'd find it right below our feet. It might be pinched off so much that it's only an inch thick and right. it wasn't worth Right, their, their time. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they left that pillar, actually, because there's a, a section of waste in between. There's a little yeah. slip on the right and then the main ore body that curves around underneath and right. kind of comes together into the, yep. the and main. And they took both of those just fall out. Yeah, well, and they they probably left it because there was that waste in there right. that, that wasn't valuable. I mean, if there, if you have to leave a pillar, leave it where yeah. the There's vein waste. is. Yep, where the waste is. Can we walk around no. to the other yeah, side? Is absolutely. that accessible? Yeah, we can go above. Because that looks goldish over there. Okay. Yeah. Goldish. Goldish. You got Dan the gold bug out here. With the proper terminology, goldish. 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 Yeah. It looks goldish. 
Oh, this is a cool view of the whole, yeah, the whole town. town up here and the hotel going up. Yep. Hoist house, dump. dump. It's a massive dump. Yeah. And you can see all the little prospecting they were doing all around. Like, see up there, like, they're poking around everywhere pretty much. Oh, yeah. And even on that hillside over there, you can see poking around there, over there, over there. The dump piles show up so well in the desert. Yeah. Don't get all that overgrowth like you guys. Yeah, oh yeah, it just in in 20 years you can't even tell. The hole. Yeah. Doesn't look bad from here, but imagine starting to slip down there and realizing that you're falling a very long way. Uh-huh. Dan's going in. One thing we look for for gold is iron. Okay. Iron is the first giveaway. Yeah. Oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sur a foot away from a certain death here. <laughs> yeah. Surprised yourself yeah, a little bit. Huh? On you. <laughs> there you go. Yep. You got a view there? You got a view, yeah. A view down <laughs> or 1100 feet. <laughs> that looks like it might be the continuation of the trace. Yeah, it does. Yeah, here, kind of. As with so many ore bodies, you know, you could have sulfides in one spot, like quartz in another. Yeah. Yep. Calcium out the third spot. And it definitely looks like the iron and quartz have pushed this way. They're not seeing any evidence of galena here. Right. But it does look to be straight on the same, the same line. But you would think to have two hundred thousand dollars worth of production yeah. there's like some there'd be some serious workings there would be a hole for there, sure yeah they're, they're, unless they were pulling it out of inside as they go what's that big room i got to and then they're taking out the 86 but they're just using the jefferson chimney as like the geographical location you know what i mean that could be yeah because i mean technically near the collar could be right. 300 it could, feet down it could be that that pile right there right. too that's true that's, there that's well. still near the collar yeah. yep like from my understanding a couple miners did that and they were trying to hide it from the owners, you know, and then the owners quickly caught on. And I think that they did a pretty good job of going back through them. Through the tailings sure to get not, the like, gold out. They got all of them, but there's an article, I'll try to find it tonight. Um, but it was like ounces worth of nugget, you know, like many, like multiple ounces in one nugget. Which, of gold nuggets? Yeah. Here. In the, from the tailings? Yeah. It's hard, rock, <laughs> hard rock nuggets. Hard rock, obviously. yeah, sure. Yeah. Just it, gold lace. It's really through. unfortunate that you have such a lack of water here in California. Yeah. Because uh, if if you had the water we had back home, right. you would run just yards and yards of this stuff yeah. and see at yeah. every spot, every dump like this, you just right. run a yard of it and see what's in it. Right. Yeah. But that's hard to do with the water. No water, yeah. Well, if there's gold like that, there's gold in the wash. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That, that's where I want to go. That's yeah. The wash that drains this whole bowl yep. will have a cross section of everything in it. Okay, yeah. And especially if you find those crevices in bedrock where everything washes over one crevice, if there's gold in the slush going down, right. it's going to drop into that crevice. Right. And it all seems to go to that wash that basically is a road. Yep. And then right there, we see the road upper, it, it hugs down. And actually that hike is kind of interesting because that wash leads down into what was lower Cerro Gordo. So before there was, when they say Cerro Gordo, they're referring to a number of mining camps altogether. Right. So the main town, primary town is here, but like down the wash about half a mile was lower Cerro Gordo. And the main mine there was the Ignacio mine, which was like one of the first big silver mines here. Um, and most of the structures down there have been gone because it's in a wash. Right? Yep. <laughs> um, but that'll lead you right through lower Cerro Gordo and everything like that. Perfect. Cool. cool. Perfect. That's where we'll go a little later then. Yeah, it's a pretty cool area. And you've had two or three years of crazy weather with big washes coming out of yeah. here. Yeah. So a lot of new material will have gone through. Yeah, we've been finding all sorts of new bottles, you know, tins and stuff like that. That's always what I'm looking for because I yep. know what I'm looking for. But yeah, we've had two years ago, we had a thousand year flood that completely wiped out Death Valley. And then this year we had Tropical Storm Hillary, which once again wiped out Death Valley and our road. Both times our road got brought down right to bedrock. Um, and so all of the fill that's on it, all of the washes should have a lot of new material in them. Perfect. Well, we're hiking around looking for gold and we're finding these really nice rocks. 
We're looking for quartz, because typically that's where the gold hangs out. And we're finding some good float of it on the hill. We're up above the Jefferson chimney. We're coming up to this other dump pile. I just stumbled on a chute. That's a wash. That's a wash and a half. Yeah. I think it was Doug. You think so? I think so. It's straight. Yeah, let's go up and see what we have here. I wonder if this was a, well, let's go see what this, ow. Pokey trees, ow. I wonder what's up. Looks like it goes up around the corner there. Let's check it out. Ooh, look here. Oh, oh, look. There's a piece. There's a piece. There's one with a vein right through it. Look at these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of them. All over. All over. Even that red stuff. Someone once told me they liked the red for uh, gold ore. Like the red iron staining. <clears throat> I don't know what why that would make a difference. The story, or the, the saying I've always heard is... Gold rides an iron horse, and iron's red. So the redder the better. The redder the better. Did you guys find what you're looking for? Oh. Yeah, it's just a one chunk that was laying on the ground with a very red rust rather than that orange rust. Okay. And I do remember hearing once that red right. rust is good. But, right. Oh yeah, see like this is a big chunk of quartz right here. And it's frozen to the ground, but... <laughs> Maybe they're just picking up those big hunks of quartz and throwing them down this chute. That could be, yeah. I mean, just roll it down the hill. Look at this one. That's all quartz, too. Quartz and iron. Yeah. Yeah, this, we're, in, we're in a good zone here to look for gold. I think we might have found... A little bit of a quartz vein here. It's not, I mean, it's not like sticking up out of the rock, but there's pieces here, there's pieces all up there. Absolutely. Kind of just, just up from where you were. It must come in a line from there because it was exposed there. That That's, well, I can, it felt like bedrock, but it, everything's frozen in. There, so. Yeah, you can't, it's hard to tell. But I mean, look, it's just, it's just quartz boulders everywhere. Yeah. It, we're right, we're right here. But no, we're definitely, well, there's more quartz here. All, all through. Yeah, here's a bunch of it exposed. There's definitely, well now, look at this. They, there's a trail that switched back and they dug through it. The plot thickens. We're finding a lot of old workings up here, old dumps. That chute we found dug into the ground comes right up to this old portal here. It's collapsed since, but we think that they were bringing their ore right out from that portal and rolling it right down this hand dug chute and Brent maybe Mistakenly, maybe on purpose, maybe a little bit of both. Threw a rock down there and it just rolled right down the trench. Down to the bottom. Dan's gonna try. Uh, I'm kind of in the wrong spot, but let's give it a try. Hello, we'll get in there. Yep. There it goes, in the chute. There it is. Oh, lost Head piece. out of the chute. Oh, that's, <laughs> still that's still going. Wouldn't that be a way to mine? Yeah. Just let gravity do the work for you. If you can't afford an aerial tram, dig a, dig dig a, a trench. trench. <laughs> I've never seen that. And this is what we were looking for. This vein running right up behind me. Quartz vein in the country rock. That is what you'd look for when you're prospecting for gold. I don't see, there's no workings up here. But it sure looks good. Quartz continuous right up through the limestone. This is where 
you'd be looking for your gold. And just kind of spiders all over the outcrop here. Series of parallel veins. This is what would get the old boys excited. excited. <laughs> old boy Dan's excited. And yes, I'm breathing really hard because I'm at 8,600 feet up and the air is very thin. And Brent's not even breaking a sweat. He's not even breathing hard at all. Brent lives up here. Yep, court stock work. Dan found him at it. I'm at it again. <laughs> That joke started to get really old. Yeah, right, yeah. You you used that one before, I bet? A few times. <laughs> yeah, you can walk into this. Like you bring your, bring your light? No. Other than your phone? Nope, it's my phone. So if they came out here and they just dumped it right off the hill. Right down the hill. Into the wash. Ooh, look, a little a little stockpile here. Mm hmm. That's good stuff. This is the stuff they were looking for, and it's quartz. Look at this interesting. Stuff. They thought that was good, but I don't think it is. I thought I was going back tomorrow to do the video, but as we were walking up the hill, we discovered a new attic. And of course, Brett's got to go check it out. See how many bears are inside. Here's my, uh, my least favorite thing in the desert. Snake? No. Garbage. Birthday blues. Birthday blues. Ah. <laughs> Happy birthday, <Yeah>. Brent. <laughs> it only goes about... 40 feet in there, but looks like some animals making the nest. Yeah. yeah some bedding back there. Yeah, these are everywhere out here. Yeah, I nest. find them all over too. Yeah. I want to see, is there a, is there a, uh, a vein? I want to see if they intersect the quartz. Decomposed quartz stuff. Okay, we're going in. There's that stuff we saw in a little stockpile. I want to find a quartz vein though, that's what I really want. I don't have my headlamp, so we're using my phone light. Oh yeah, here it is, right here. Quartz vein. I intersected it. Now, where did it go? It goes somewhere. It's not on the face. There's a little fault. It looks like they were following in. And definitely a quartz vein. Some bugs with crystals. What is this? Is this just like, I think this is brecciated quartz vein. And they followed it back in and then it kind of ballooned out into a into a vein. That's interesting. Not a lot of interesting stuff in it. There's a nice little bug full of crystals. But Dan thought he saw an added up above, so let's go up above so we can find it up there. Well, the added is right down there by my bag and I'm coming up above and there is a surface exposure of the quartz vein right here. It goes up the hill right here. It doesn't look terribly interesting on the surface, but I think this is the fault that we saw underground that brecciates the quartz. It runs right down to where Dan and Brent are. And then the quartz vein kind of wraps up and off to the right. Some iron standing on the surface, some nice red stuff. This, this is what they were looking for. A little prospect at it. It never really amounted to anything. 
very cool fault exposure with the vein just off to the south. We're following this trench down and it goes way down the mountain. It was an unbelievable amount of work to dig this thing. And I was just telling Brent a story about the only time I've ever heard something like this is back in my mining district. They, I, I read an old report about guys buckskinning ore down the hill and they would, the prospect or the, the vein was way up high on the mountain and they'd go in in the early spring where there was still a bunch of snow and they would get the ore out, put it in these leather buckskin bags and they'd start to shoot down the snow because in the Cascades we get like 20 or 30 feet of snow. Woo! Now I'm going to tell you this story sitting down. <laughs> but they would get a little shoot going in the snow and they'd ride these buckskin bags down to the mill at the bottom where there wasn't as much snow and then they'd mill them. And we were talking about this trench, maybe in the winter they did the same thing. They This would be lined with snow and they could just sled stuff down or ride it down. So we're interested to see where it goes. Because if they were sending ore down and they were milling it, there might be some sort of residual mill stuff at the bottom. Very cool. <laughs> That'd be an ironstone of some sort, I'd assume, because of what we're where we are up here. Yeah. But not much more than that I can tell you about it. Brecciated. Brecciated means a whole bunch of fragments of rock glued together with another rock. Yeah. But other than that... We've crushed some stuff that looks like that, that is kind of like a jasper, ironstone jasper, As you call Ironstone jasper, yeah, yeah. That's very cool. And the, the jasper is the cement. Of, in, in, this, in this case, case, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Have you seen any more of that around? No. That'd be cool if you cut it, actually. Yeah. Cool slabber. All right. Well. well, here's the last little remnants of our trench, and it just kind of comes down here and ends. Yeah, this was, I, I have no idea what they were doing here. This baffles me, no end. Because when you're talking about gold, a little one stamp mill, you don't need a lot of space. Right. There is kind of a little flat spot over here, right there. But I expect to see tailings or something if they were milling here, which I don't see anything. So it is a mystery. I don't know what the shoot was for. Or maybe they got it down here. I don't see any trail around. It's not like they loaded it onto a donkey here. It's a mystery. Well, maybe we're solving the puzzle here. There may have been a little mill right up there. And that all that uniform crush there is some of their tailings. There was a rock wall up there. I don't know if I got it on video. Could have been a foundation. A foundation for a little stamp mill or something? Yeah. Somebody did a lot of work to dig that trench and bring all that stuff down. Because there's no there's no evidence of any workings there. It's a rock wall and a flat foundation spot and then a pile of crushed rock below it. Maybe that's what they were doing. I like it. I like that what, conclusion what? that we came to there. There well, we go. It's always, it always <laughs> fascinating yes. just trying to figure out what it looked like a hundred or two hundred years ago. Yeah. Well, you never, you're never going to have the answer. All you can do is just tell a story. Tell a good story. I think that was the best story we got for that. Best story. <laughs> best story today. Yeah. But it's it's in a nice spot compared to the Jefferson chimney too. Oh yeah. So a Jefferson shoot? Maybe. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. If there was a mill there, maybe this trench going down here was the way that they took whatever it was straight down. And there is court evidence of quartz everywhere over on that side. So quite possible that's where they were getting the gold from. Yeah. I'll find out tomorrow. Yeah. Hopefully. Go find some gold. That is just a huge quartz boulder, isn't it? Yep. That would be mineable width. If it was in the vein or in, in the ground. There's another one. Those are big pieces. They came down that chute of theirs. Yeah, yeah, they got got <laughs> carried away. <laughs> yeah, those are big pieces. 
I'm on my way up to see Dan. I can hear his detector going off from down here on the dump pile, but I can't see him. So I'm gonna go on a little goose chase here to find him. But I think he's up there. I wanna see all the nuggets he found. I don't know where he is. I heard him up here somewhere, but now I don't hear him anymore. It is really hard to hike at 8,500 feet. Right over there. There's a Dan bucket. Oh, ah, yeah. Whew. That was close. Dan. Oh, guy's way up there. Oh, where are you at? Oh, I see him. I see ya! I gotta go up more. Oh, I found Dan at the, almost the top of the mountain. You seem out of breath. Holy cow. This is hard. This is a big hike up here. Yeah, the air's so thin. Well, I've been detecting signals all day. Some good, some bad. A lot of tin cans, a lot of garbage. Yeah. Got a bucket full of rocks that could have something. Oh, nice. Yep. I think I just found the one pit that I really wanted to detect. So just about to go up on top of it. Nice. Are you finding, are the good rocks in quartz or just in limestone? The bucket I got down below was all a, a Gaussian. It was all just a decomposed sulfide of some sort. Okay. Yeah. And that's kind of what the article was saying to look for. Well, it said to look for quartz that had red on the surface. Okay. That's not quite what I was finding. We got a bucket or something. Yeah. That sounds good. And the ground's frozen. That makes it harder. Yeah. It ain't no nugget. <laughs> <laughs> Keep looking. Yep. So you have your detector to tune out iron is that correct so you're trying to miss all the cans and the iron yes, trash yes, right now i do i do um it is only somewhat effective doing that okay yeah and uh you can also once you get a an ear for it you can tell the signals that are probably false gold signals too oh, okay yeah this one is a false gold yeah okay it's too slow it's not zippy enough and it's signaling one direction, but not the other. And that guy just telling me it's not a good signal. I see. Yeah. So pass on it. Pass on that. It's a lot of effort to dig a signal. You so want to be. to dig the good ones. I like that one. And you go down an inch and test and... See if it's on the surface. Signal sounding even better. Ooh, the ground is frozen. frozen. It's a nice sounding signal. And there it is. Uh-huh. Some little decorative belt piece. Brass or copper or something. Yeah. So it was, it's not iron. It's very soft. Yeah. But that's what it would sound like if it was gold. Yep, yeah, that sounded like zip. that sound like gold. Oh, that's my boot. That's worth keeping. There's little patterns and stuff on it. Is there? An artifact from Sarah Gordo. Nice. You licked it, I won't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what you'll find is this black stuff is oxidized galena. Oh, okay. So like that would be a sizable piece of gold if it was gold. If that was gold, that would be a very visible piece. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. I mean, it looks good. Right? Some of it looks very strange too. Uh, some of it is just a sponge of silica. Oh. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Look look at the look at the bro freshly broken yeah. surface here. Yeah. 
That's freshly broke. You broke I that. I broke that. That's the fresh surface. Oh, okay. And it's just a sponge oh, okay. of yeah. silica. Are those, can you tell by the the sponge, are they like cubic crystal? Yeah, see like that's a, that's a cube. Can you see that? Maybe. Are your if, eyes good if enough? I, <laughs> if I squint real hard and pretend, but they like may have been pyrite cubes that weathered out and they're... Mm. And then there's some like this, feel, the, feel this one. Like, yes. Yeah. I assume it's just gonna be galena right through. Yeah, fairly dense. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's heavy. Well, we'll see this what we can fit in the crusher. Though. No, it's like, it's like a sponge, it's, it's light. But it sounds off. It does. It's um, it, it, all these sponge pieces always sounded off on their black, uh, wherever it's black. On, the, on that face, okay. Yeah. yeah. And here we go, the first of the detected pieces. Stuff. That one was. Oh, this one. This one is heavy. This one's really heavy. You can do it. That's Dan's detected stuff. Now we go pan. Let's pan. We are getting ready to pan out. Gold. Gold. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Gold. Lots and lots of gold. Gold. Dan is working his way down through his pan. And if you want to see the results, you'll have to check out his channel. It's our last day here at Cerro Gordo. We are going to go down to the wash and look for some gold with Dan. But first, Brett and I are going to take a quick peek in the Omega Tunnel. This has fascinated both Brent and I for a long, long time. This is one way to access the workings of the Union Mine without taking the skip down. It's caved. We've done some previous videos where we've tried to open it up, but we're gonna go on a little scouting mission today, get some footage of the tunnel, and make a plan on what we can do and how to open this thing in the future. It's gotten a little more sketchy since the last time we were here. It always does. Yeah, but I imagine if I were, if. The mucker were to work, this all needs to get down to probably that grade, so we can just drive it in and out. Yeah, and you could do that with the mucker. The mucker would just scoop all that out if you wanted. But they could probably have like a slight slope, could, could I? Or I need to get this down, you think? No, you could have a you could have a, a little ramp there. To here, but then like kind of keep it in this grade, but then I go back. You would have to go back down yeah, again. Yeah. Okay, yes. It's it's not too bad. Okay. I mean, with the mucker, it, it's fast, okay. and you can just gr get to whatever grade you need. Yeah. That's I think I started to start tapping up there, you know. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, there's a lot of stuff to come down up there. Yeah. Not an ideal situation, but. You guys poking your head in? Yeah. Okay. Are you coming down? No, no I'm going to go check out the mine dump. <laughs> I don't like underground. <laughs> Dan's going to stay and away. That one looks sketchy. Especially this one, yeah. Yeah. Brent and I will take a look here and. Well, this has come down since we were here. Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't. It's slowly caving in. Because that all of that was flush, that metal, and so the rock is falling and tumbling into the mine. Mm. That's great. It's very terrifying to look up. Yeah, don't don't look up. Just gently. Yeah, that's there's a lot of a lot of real nasty. Well, we'll try and go in here. Um, I gotta just get in there. Oh, huh. This one too. Whoa. Yeah. And I think if you look above it, it's really wet. Maybe the moisture just loosened it up. Yeah, that's new, huh? Yeah, I think it's just right, maybe right there. All of these look like they're. Yeah. Ready to come down. Yeah. That's on. But yeah, this doesn't look, that doesn't look good at all. No. Yeah, 
walk softly in here. Even here, though, this isn't, this isn't going to be really big enough for a mucker, do you think? No, the mucker wouldn't fit in here. Okay. No. So it would be like the walk behind big nose situation? Yeah. Which even that would have struggle with like this. Right, you'd have to like dex pan that yeah, or feather and wedge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a lot of timbering in here. Yeah, a lot of timber work. It's almost like this feels like they are like don't go past here. Uh huh. <laughs> Is it, like keep out. Yeah, I don't know why else they would situate that like that. Or is that keep them apart? Mm, probably not right in the middle. Yeah, so I was thinking. Yeah, this is dingo for sure in yeah. here. I, do you think it would even get past someone like this? The dingo? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I guess. I don't know what the, the bucket. I didn't bring a tape measure. Yeah. I don't know. I've seen enough. <laughs> yeah, we, we know what's back there. We understand what's going on. Yeah, we understand what's going on. I, just, I mostly wanted to see the the width and the height, okay. but yeah, there's no way the mucker would fit in here, unfortunately. Yeah. All right. Um, but a dingo and lots of timbers. I mean, all this timber here you could reuse. Yeah. I mean, this, like like where you're standing is fine. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Well, basically, it would just be like replicating what they did in here. Yeah, pretty much. They used a lot of wood. They used a lot of wood. And there you'd you'd have to set a lot of stalls back behind us. There's yeah. some big nasty donagers hanging there over your head. Right. Yeah. I don't know how far how far back are we? Like 150 feet at least? Probably, yeah. And we're halfway? Yeah. 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 Alright. It'd be a lot of work. It'd be a lot of work. But like you say, I got a lot of months in the winter. It w yeah, you got a lot of time, and and if you could, if you could open it up, it'd be oh yeah, the store. Yeah, huge, huge accomplishment. All, All right, right. see if we can get out of here without getting crushed. Yeah, that's a big project. Yeah, that'd be a lot of work. That's that would be a lot of work. Let's go down to the wash and see if we can yeah, find some find gold. Some <laughs> we are headed down the wash. Dan guarantees us gold today, so we are on the hunt. We're going to do a little bedrock sniping. We are down in the wash right below Cerro Gordo, and we found this bedrock outcropping that we're really excited about because as the water runs over this stuff over thousands and millions of years, all the gold gets stuck, gets trapped in these cracks like this. And so we've all brought our pry bars and shovels down. We're gonna wedge these rocks out, gather up all the fine material that we can from under these rocks. All that right there is really, really good stuff. And the gold will migrate all the way down to the bottom. So we're gonna scrape all this up into buckets, take it back up and pan it. This is just beautiful stuff right here. The rock pulls out really easy. You can get down. A little, a little brush or broom would have been helpful, but it's so soft, it's, it's coming off pretty easy. One of our fears was it was gonna be frozen. It doesn't appear to be too bad, but all these little, all this little stuff down in the cracks, this is what will have the gold. Another method of prospecting this would be to use a dry washer, and I'm gonna dry wash for the first time on an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. But if we can find some good gold here, it might encourage Brent to get a dry washer. I've been taking a lot of material out of here that's just this kind of dusty brownish stuff. 
but I pulled out a rock and now I'm getting a lot of really rusty iron red stuff down here, especially at the bottom. This is where your gold is gonna end up. It goes to the very bottom of the crack and all this rust is telling me that these iron bearing minerals that are very, very dense, this is where they've ended up. So this is a really, really good spot. This would be a perfect place for a little shop vac vacuum and you could just suck all this little fine stuff up. Make sure you're not missing any gold. But this looks really, really good. Well, Brent told me a story earlier that I wanted to catch on video because I didn't quite understand where the original kind of strike and smelters were. So we're up here in this wash just below town. Yeah, we're in between what's commonly referred to as Cerro Gordo, which these days is, you know, where the hotel is, where the main union mine is. But back in the day, there's also a lower Cerro Gordo, which is just below us in this wash. And lower Cerro Gordo, as they were walking up the wash, is kind of where they first found the big surface deposits of the Galena. And so below us, there's an area called the Ignacio Mine, which is the primary mine that they're working then. And so there they came upon you know, large pieces of galena. They set up what are called vasos, which are small, um, kind of adobe smelters. And so they were working it just in small batches, heating it as hot as they could in these little kind of furnaces that almost look like a little tent. Okay. Um, and then that was the big strike, but then that ore made its way to Fort Independence, which led more people to get up here, which eventually led to the massive strikes up at the Jefferson Chimney, Union Chimney, and the Union Mine. But the primary and original strike was down here in Lower Cerro Gordo. And so they were just working the float. That's it. They, they were, were they were finding like rocks and boulders of Galena in the in the Correct. wash, yeah. and just smelting those. Yeah. And it wasn't until Baudry, uh, Belshan Baudry, yeah. Belshan Baudry came up, and they they were like, "Hey, let's follow this float uphill," and they discovered the the actual load deposit up above. Yeah. And if we go down further, the the deposit there was a deposit at the Ignacio because in these days there's like they just didn't. Uh, uh, a hole, you know, they didn't have to go underground. Okay, just, just like open pit. trench. Yeah, they don't open a trench up down there. You can still see it. And that was kind of the beginnings. And then they did put some workings down there. They're the biggest in Lower Cerro Gordo is this mine called the Potosi Tunnel that I've been trying forever to get into. Oh. Apparently the plan with the Potosi, it came on a little bit afterwards, but its plan was to intersect every major mine in both Lower Cerro Gordo and Upper Cerro Gordo. So they wanted to drive it back. And I guess at this level, they were going to intersect in what, probably the four or five hundred level of the Union Mine. Mm. They plan on intersecting the Ignacio, the other ones in Lower Cerro Gordo, and also pushing it all the way back to the Union. We don't know if they ever made it, but I haven't gotten into the portal yet. It's caved down at the at the portal, yeah. right at the portal? Yeah. Another use for a mucker. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, so that's, like I said, I didn't realize that they were just processing the float. I thought yeah. the original smelters were way up on the hill, yeah. right at the strike. The original ones are around the corner here. There's even some remnants of one, um, yeah. but they were just these kind of adobe clay structures that they would throw them in and just do what they could. Cool. You're finding good stuff? Finding some great stuff. I should have warned you guys to bring gloves. This is really hard on your hands, scraping the bedrock and like a whisk broom or something helps, but I just use gloves usually. And I apologize for not <laughs> warning you guys. <laughs> a, Brent and I never come prepared for anything. So that's kind of our yeah, MO. For the course. Yeah, for sure. And the big shovels that we brought, obviously we don't need. <laughs> so, yeah, they're not doing much. <laughs> not gonna need them. But I'm finding some really good, this is like ideal conditions for sniping cracks. You can't get better than this. The bedrock conditions are perfect. The gulch here is draining such a great big bowl. And the fact that we are in the richest mineralized bedrock material you can find, you can't get better than this. Now, gold, that's another question. We know most of the mineralization up there is silver lead and zinc, but we also know there's gold there. So we'll see. We'll see. We've moved up into the sun a little bit where it's warmer. And look at this crack. It's pretty much perpendicular to the water flow. Water flows this way, a big deep crack, lots of bedrock holding it secure. It's been there a long time. I'm excited to see what's at the bottom of this one. All these big, huge slabs of frozen, but material that got down in that crack. It runs all the way down there. Let's see if I can do this. And just scrape it off with a hammer. That is all good stuff. Hey. 
I've got about a third of a bucket of material here. We're gonna take that up and pan it out here a little later. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. Dan's gonna let me use his metal detector. Thank you, Dan. I'm gonna go detect some of this bedrock. Let's see if I can find a nugget. I could be finding coins, bullets, other metallic objects. But with the detector, I'll have kind of x-ray vision into the bedrock and I'll have a greater chance of maybe pinpointing a larger piece. Well, Dan's gonna give us a little detector 101 here. Okay, just the basics though, just the basics. Yep, just the basics. It's set fully automatic for you, so there's no, nothing for you to change. It's computer's gonna do all the thinking for you. So it's turned on, you've turned it on already. We're just gonna find a barren spot of ground on the bedrock and pulse it a few times. This just gives the computer a few moments to uh, understand what the bedrock around here is like. And then there's nothing more for you to do other than swing. And when you hear a beep, we'll have it on discrimination mode. So it's trying to find gold for you or non-ferrous. Okay. When you hear a beep, go back and forth over that area a few times and you want it to be consistent. It beeps every time you pass. Okay. If it beeps one time and then doesn't beep the other, move on. Okay. Move on. What's the bar across the top? Is that the iron bar? Iron yes. discrimination? Okay. So uh, we have it on discrimination right now, uh, which is, there's two different modes. There's a uh, full mode shows you iron and gold. There's the discrimination mode should only show you gold. Okay. The bar at the top will go to the left if it's iron, to the right if it's gold. Right. So if it goes left right now, it shouldn't beep for you. Okay. If it goes right, it should beep. Sometimes it takes the machine a couple passes over a, a piece to figure out what it is. Got it. That one's not consistent enough for me to dig. Okay. So just keep going until you find something that's consistent. That's pretty consistent. Now, a wash like this that's draining an old ghost town, yeah. <laughs> there's gonna be metal everywhere. Yeah. So just dig the really, really good ones. Just dig the good ones. Okay, so would that be a good one? Yep. That's a good one. So consistent beeping, way over to the non-ferrous uh, side. No, it's actually not. Not, not so after, great. After I've waved it a bit here. You notice how it's beeping one way and not the other? Uh huh. That's kind of a sign that it's confused. Okay. So I would wait for a perfect one in this situation. A perfect one. Okay, we're looking for the perfect one. Here we go. Metal detector cam. I'm going to stay close to Dan too, so if I find something, he can help me. So you can rub it in. <laughs> I've got a really good signal right there. I've moved it out of the hole. Let's see if I can find it here. Nope. No wedding ring. That'll set it off. Nope. Oh, there we go. Now I'm gonna dump out a little bit. Still in my hand. Gone. What? Oh, what's this? Gold nugget! Gold nugget! No. It's a button. I think a little round thing or a washer. Let me get it cleaned off. Dan, will you lick this for me? Sure. <laughs> so it looks like a little washer or button of some kind. It's real hard, but it's not ferrous. So there we go, our first find. Not gold, but the detector works. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I guess around here, having a lead is not, a lead a, nugget. Is not <laughs> unusual. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that is, that's lead, isn't it? Can you bend one of the little prongs there on the side? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, put it in your mouth. Oh yeah, it bends, it bends like lead. Is yeah. it? Okay. There now that is a cool find. I actually yeah. think that is awesome. Yeah, lead lead nugget. Yeah. A lead nugget. Might even have some uh, silver still in it. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go, Brent. That, that would be easy to uh, just toss in a big coupel. Yeah. Yeah. Just heat just it. Just check it out. Find out. Here you go, Brent. Yes. Yours to do with what you will. Well, thank you. Well, I found another little lead nugget here. So I'll give that to Brent. 
And I did not dig one nail today, not one piece of iron. So I'm really, really impressed with uh, what discrimination? The discrimination. The yeah. discrimination of that machine. Cause I mean, I, I could pass over all that iron and not worry about it. And I just found, I found a couple lead nuggets. I found a brass shell and that first little button. So it works really, really well for discriminating out the iron. But we've got a couple buckets full. We're gonna head up, pan it out and see if we can find any gold. We are working diligently looking for gold. Trying very, very hard to find Brent some Cerro Gordo gold. We are not finding any gold in this stuff at all. Not even little specks. We've got one bucket left to go through. One bucket left. Well, we've panned all of our buckets. Dan's checking my work back there behind me, but seems like none of us found any gold today. Cerro Gordo is a great lead silver mine, but no gold. Well, even though we didn't find any gold, the adventure is not over because I've got some stuff I'm going to mail back to myself. And then there'll be a part two coming up where I crush down the rock, Brent and I mined underground, run it through my system and see if I can find any gold. Well, we're going to jump right in here. I've got some ore laid out here on the table. I've got some stuff here in these sacks but I've picked out a few select pieces that I want to take over to the rock shop and get cut up and slabbed and see if we can find any gold. So let's take these over, get this stuff slabbed up first, and then we'll start crushing the rest of the stuff down and see if we can find any gold in Brent's silver mine. Oh, I've got some really juicy pieces here. I'm really excited to see this cut. It's gonna reveal the minerals so much easier and better on a fresh surface. So to start, I'm just gonna slab this guy just kind of in half. We just wanna get a fresh surface, see what we can see. We'll check back in a little while. Well, now let's get to crushing Brent's stuff and see if we can liberate any gold. We're gonna start here with this six by 10 jaw crusher. Then it's gonna be fed into the hammer mill where it's gonna be crushed down to a fine sand or powder. It's gonna be run across our four by eight shaker table and all the gold is gonna come over into the number one and number two concentrates, and everything else is gonna go down into the spiral classifier and finally into tailings. The whole process starts here with our six by 10 inch jaw crusher. This takes the raw run of mine ore and crushes it down to about three quarter inch minus. This thing can take up to about a six or eight inch piece and get it ready for the hammer mill. We got our stuff all crushed up to about three quarter inch minus. We'll run it through the hammer mill next. But I found a piece while I was crushing that I pulled out. It's got some really nice quartz laced through it. We'll put that one in the saw so we can see any gold in it. The next step is to take the crushed material from the jaw crusher and run it through our hammer mill where it pulverizes the material down to a fine sand and liberates any gold or silver. This hammer mill can produce about one ton per hour at about 30 mesh and smaller. We run the hammer mill wet, keep the dust down, and create a nice slurry that's fed onto our 4x8 shaker table. Once crushed, the material and slurry comes down this orange chute, which feeds right into the aluminum distributor trough on the shaker table. Once the crushed ore enters the trough, it evenly feeds the crushed ore out onto the shaker table, where it can be separated by density, and all of the dents gold, silver, and sulfides fall into the grooves that we cut into our rubber shaker table top. The action of the shaker table moves the dense material at the bottom of the groove over towards the number one and number two concentrates. All of the lighter materials, such as quartz and calcite and other waste rock, 
is not dense enough to settle down into the bottom of the grooves and works its way down into the number four tailings, which then goes into the spiral classifier. Once it gets into the spiral classifier, the large particles settle down in the water column and are augured out this screw. The spiral classifier does a great job of dewatering the tailings and augering the coarser material up out into this white super sack so we can crush it finer later if we need to. These three pieces of equipment, the jaw crusher, hammer mill, and shaker table, these are our three core pieces of equipment that make up our turnkey system. We manufacture and sell all the equipment that you see here today. So if you're interested in any more information on any of these products, you can check out our website or you can send us an email and you can find that information in the description below. Well, I think that stuff ran really well on the table. It was pretty interesting to see how oxidized it was. There was that huge band of purple, kind of red purple stuff oxidized sulfides of some kind. I'm expecting to see, yeah, see it's just, it's just all that purple, dark purple oxidized sulfide. There was a little band of silver stuff in there. I'm not sure if that was galena or maybe pyrite, but that went mostly into the number one here. I thought I saw a couple little pieces of gold go down. But we're going to take this stuff, we're going to smelt it down, and we're going to capture whatever we can. I expect to get some silver and maybe some gold along with it. Well, this is definitely the mad scientist part of the video here. Smelting is so much an art as it is a science. What I've done is I've combined a little bit of silica sand, about half borax and half soda ash. I figure I've got about twice as much flux as I do the concentrates. So now I'm going to mix this all together. Ideally, this would be dry, but in January in Washington State, nothing's dry and it takes forever to dry out. And I've had pretty good luck smelting it just wet. Give this a good shake around here. There we go, that's probably good enough. This is a number 10 or a number 12 crucible. And I forgot to mention, I've added some bismuth to this, ground up bismuth to act as a collector because if there's just a little bit of precious metals in here and you don't use a collector, that won't come out in the bottom of the cone mold. So I've added some bismuth. We're gonna get as much of this in here as we can. Hopefully we can get most of it. Or all of it, maybe. Okay, we're gonna stop there. I'll get it starting to melt down and then I'll add the rest of this. Ah, oh, we'll live dangerously. I think we're gonna fit it all in there. Oh boy. There we go. This is the art part, I guess. <laughs> so the, the, the hope is that this doesn't boil over because sometimes when you heat it up, especially when it's wet, it will froth and foam. But hopefully this just stays nice and calm. It all melts down. The precious metals uh, get collected by the collector metal and come down to the bottom of this crucible. We're gonna pour it into a cone mold a little bit later which looks like this. And the idea is that all the dense, precious and collector metal will go down to the bottom of the cone, right down here. All the slag is very light and, and not dense, so it floats on top. And then once it's cooled, we can break the collector metal off the slag pyramid that we make and refine it further. We'll get our not so high tech, but high tech enough furnace going here. This is just kale wool. And I cover the top like that with a little vent hole. So let me turn it on and we'll get smelting. Here's a look at our first piece. The mineral oil makes it kind of difficult to clean these off. But let's go get this washed off with some water and some soap, and we'll see if we can see any gold or other minerals in it. Just a little bucket of water and some soap, a little scrub brush, and get cleaned right up. All right, let's have a look at what we got here.
there's some really interesting stuff going on. I've got a couple different characteristics I wanna show you. Amazing to me how oxidized this stuff is. This one in particular is super brecciated quartz along here. It's got all these pockets where the sulfides were that they oxidized out all down here. I'm really fascinated by this red stuff right here. I wanna take a closer look at that. This one has quite a bit more quartz in it, broken up, big pockets where there's you know maybe some sulfides. It looks like it's brecciated, which is really common in, in fault zones where this whole thing went and broke the quartz up as it was uh, in place as the fault moved. So there's some really interesting stuff. I'm, I really want to look down here in this brecciated zones and up along these margins here because that's a lot of times where you'll find some good mineralization. I'm going to be using this little microscope. It clips right on my phone. I've used this in a lot of other videos. It works really, really good for recording close-up shots. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to check it out. We're starting right here on this bright red zone. I think those are little cavities where there's probably some sulfides that oxidized out. Now we'll move over to the edge here and take a look. It's just so pockmarked. It's really interesting. But I don't see any sulfide grains or gold grains or anything like that. No galena, which is the ore that Cerro Gordo is known for. There's no sulfides at all in here. No pyrite, no galena, no nothing. Look at how spongy that stuff is. But I can see how the gold would be incredibly hard to spot in this stuff because it's just so oxidized. Look at this crater pockmarked face. All those sulfides are gone and it left just a Swiss cheese looking matrix behind. Well, I did my best. I looked at most of these under the microscope. I saw that same spongy texture on almost all of them with those rotted out, weathered out sulfides, but I didn't see any gold. Here we go, the moment of truth. If I did everything right, there should be a little prill of metal down at the bottom. I'm gonna flip this over. And the metal should separate. Nice and clean from our slag. Look at that, we're great. So this should have all of our precious metals in it. Now we'll put it in the Cupel furnace, oxidize away all the base metals in here, and we'll be left with just the precious metals. Now I'm gonna take a cupel. This thing is like a, a sponge for oxides, but metal doesn't soak into it. So I'm gonna take our prill here, put it in the cupel, put it into the furnace at about 1850 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gonna start oxidizing all the bismuth, the lead, the copper, the iron, any metals that are in here are gonna oxidize and roll off our molten puddle and be absorbed by the cupel. And any precious metals won't oxidize. So as the reaction continues and goes to completion, we'll be left with just a precious metal button at the end, right in the center of the cupel, and then we'll know that we have just our precious metals, just our gold and silver. All right, let's see what we have in our rocks here. <laughs> oh no, it's really, really small. It's, it's right there. That is, that is like comically small. I can get it without burning myself. Oh, it's hot. 
There it is. And I thought it was a gold color in the cupel, but I think it's actually silver color. Okay, here we go. Let's see if it'll pick it up. Zero, zero, zero. Point zero, zero, four. I saw it on there for a little while. So just none. Hardly anything. Well, Brent, that area of your mine doesn't seem to have a lot of gold. But for everyone else, I want to put this in perspective because Cerro Gordo was at one time the richest silver mine in California. It has over 30 miles of tunnels. And Brent and I were sampling a spot that looked really, really good. It was oxidized, it had sulfides at one time, it, was, it, was, it had all the telltale signs of precious metals. And we didn't find hardly anything. The bead was so comically small that it's not even worth you know, going back there and looking again. So I want everyone to understand that just because your first sample doesn't pull a bunch of precious metals doesn't mean there's none in the mine. You got to diversify. You got to look other places. You know, gold is where you find it. So I hope that this isn't the end of the story. I'd like to go back and look for some more gold, look for some high grade silver. I really enjoy going down there and seeing Brent and hanging out with, with those guys. So I hope everyone learned something from this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the adventure. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you on the next video.